So, from priests who marry couples to someone who's right at the other end, how do you keep your faith in love if you're a divorce lawyer? Reporter Andy Park went to meet with the woman nicknamed the Piranha of Pitt Street. Hi, I'm here to see Susan Pearson, please. Hi, take a seat. I'll give her a call. Thanks. I'm curious to know what Australia's top female divorce lawyer, a woman who only ever sees failed relationships, knows about love. Andy. Susan. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, you too. Thanks for meeting with me. I wasn't entirely sure you uh, would, so... No, I wasn't entirely sure I would either. I'm going to the boardroom. I do act for a number of people who would be regarded as high-profile individuals, but there are a, there's a great deal of hidden wealth in Australia. Um, a lot of private wealth and those people um, have no wish to become high profile and that's one reason why they can't come to see me. Most people do acknowledge the role their partner, their spouse has played in their life and they recognise that and also there are some who decide that they want to attack their spouse and take whatever they're entitled to and their right arm as well. Um, Sometimes other appendages are selected. <laughs> You've been practising family law for 30 years. Are you still surprised at the sorts of emotions that can be brought to the surface when people decide to end a marriage? People enter into marriage with strong positive feelings. They exit their marriage with sometimes equally strong <laughs> negative feelings. Yeah. Um, so there's very little now that surprises me. I had a case once in court. We resolved all the issues, except who was going to receive the doona cover. The doona cover? The doona cover. And how much was this settlement worth? I mean, that wasn't a huge case, but that would have been worth maybe $5 million. And they were arguing over a doona cover? Because they weren't arguing about the doona cover. They were arguing probably about who was going to have the ultimate victory. The most complex reason is sometimes people want to continue that relationship, having a relationship with their spouse, even though it's become dysfunctional and combative. But they know that if they resolve the case, then they'll never have contact with their spouse again. Is it hard to walk that ethical line because you see inside the bedrooms and bank accounts of Australia's most powerful people, knowing all that but maintaining a professional standard must be kind of hard? Um, yeah, well certainly it, it, I don't think it helps a client if one becomes too um, caught up with their personal issues. We have had an inquiry from someone who wanted us to prepare a prenuptial agreement at, for them um, and to leave the names and details of his spouse or proposed de facto partner blank so that he could use it as a template for a series of relationships in which he might become involved. Susan Pearson says she keeps a strict separation between her work and her private life. But I'm about to find out that's not always 100% true. Thanks for having me. Andrew, Andrew. Nice, to nice to meet you. I've heard a little bit about you. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. You'd mentioned that you'd spoken to colleagues of mine who commented on how private I am, and I must say I'm out of my comfort zone mm. in doing this. But I'd like to ask how you guys met. Well, I, uh, uh, I had my first divorce, and Susan acted for me. And I was very impressed by her in every way. So I was quite attracted to her. And what was going through your mind? Well, I was looking at her <laughs> legs and I liked them. <laughs> <laughs> when the divorce finished, uh, I received the Christmas card from Susan. Well, from the firm. From the firm. <laughs> well, I assume. So I, I assumed that it was a personal thing. Well, in fact, it probably wasn't. Life's full of regrets, yes. from my point of view. Had yeah, I, same for me. Uh, had things been different, we would have got together earlier, I think. Mm. So does that mean that you have a, a prenup? We don't. You don't have a prenup? No. no. How, well, why not? I could see no reason to. I mean, I think Susan is so honest that if, in the unlikely event that we get divorced, I'm sure there wouldn't be a problem. 
We just never really felt the need for it. In fact, I don't think we even discuss, really discussed it. No. But and in fact, she gave me advice after the first divorce. I said, how can I, how can I be sure this will not happen to me again? And she said, never have a combined bank account, never borrow money together. And yet we did all those things afterwards. It really is a beautiful collection. Uh, we also collect some Chinese work. Yeah. I've got to say it's surprising to start to see a softer side of the woman they call the piranha of Pitt Street. The fact she's found love despite her career being almost entirely about heartbreak. It's luck. Yeah, it's luck. Luck. Oh, yeah. mm. So I help the unlucky. Mm -hmm. So you see people that are just hell-bent on destroying each other, sometimes. Sometimes. Does that affect how you see people? I don't think so, no. How, how I'm still not? a romantic. Marriages follow the seasons. Um, they're not, not always summer, not always winter. So what I do doesn't, hasn't made me cynical. So you're saying the piranha of Pitt Street believed in love? Uh, yes, I think so.